beautiful? How you doing today? Welcome back to the Prison Diaries. So first, I just want to apologize. I had kind of disappeared for a couple of days and wasn't making any videos, but if you watched my previous one, you probably could tell that I was a little bit off. I think I'm uh, feeling better, you know. It's been a lot going on. There's a lot going on just out in the world, you know what I'm saying? Like, gosh, it's a scary world that we're living in nowadays. That definitely, you know, concerns me. I worry about just the 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 safety of the human race and you know just hope you're being safe out there and taking all necessary precautions and just being careful then of course in my personal life it's been rough my sister has been having problems i've been having a tough time at that grocery store Cam and I, it's always a working progress. It's always a working progress. It's been tough. Like, he's been locked down, and then he had been going through some craziness with the person he was in the cell with, and I'm trying to help him out with all of that, and then in the midst of it, it's like we're just arguing all the time. It's like, it's just been a tough time. But... Nevertheless, I missed you guys, and I'm so thankful, you know, for the newcomers that have c c come along, and I really hope that we develop a connection, <laughs> and I really hope to be kind of like past all of this craziness and on to better days. There's an old Janet Jackson song that I used to listen to all the time, and, you know, I would encourage you to look it up. I might go try to find it on YouTube and then just, like, link it in the description. So check out the description, it might be in there. But, um, it's a, it's a link to her song. I'm gonna I'm a find it and I'm gonna put it in this description. Uh, so check out the description. It's gonna be in there. The, it's a Janet Jackson song called Better Days. Maybe you know it already, but it's from that album, her All For You album, and, um, Gotta Get Me Somebody or something like, something like that. Gotta find me a lover. Something, something. Anyway, it was that album. It was pretty popular. There's like a song on that album. I had the album and I really like the song called Better Days. And it's just a zen, chill song. But it's like hopeful too. You know, like, I'm about to... I mean, I'm not even going to try to sing it. But yeah, check out the description. I'm going to have the link in the description for that video. <laughs> for the Probably just like a lyric video so you can hear the song rather than see like a music video or something. But um, yeah, so Better Days are coming. I need to finish drinking my Red Bull. But in the meantime, today we are reading February 21st. It looked like 12th in the screen. Gosh, I'm not with it still. This is crazy. I thought that I'd be better after a couple of days. I've been watching Gossip Girl. <laughs> Every time I notice that, like, in my real life, I start to feel like a lot of drama is happening and I'm just overwhelmed. For some reason, I like watching Gossip Girl because that show, they deal with so much social drama. I don't know, it makes me feel better about my life. And sometimes it gives me a little strength because I'm just like, well, if they can handle it, so can I. <laughs> Even though it's just characters playing a role. But okay. Um, so, February 21st, 2017. At this point, I was still in the hole. And... I think I kept going, I've been going back and forth trying to decide whether or not I wait it out and go to the STAR program or I try my hand on this compound and see how things go, you know? Uh, okay. Dear Journal, hey, my emotional makeup is all in disarray right now. Oh, Lord. Maybe it's just this time. It's just this time of year because in 2017 I was an, an emotional wreck and here I am again. Two years later, 18, 19, yeah, 23 years later. Oh my gosh, it's been three years. Jesus, well, two years. Oh yeah, three years, because all of 2017, 18, 19. Yeah, it's been three years. Oh my God. I'm not the brightest bulb in the box. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, my emotional makeup is all in disarray today. First, I had an upsetting, an upsetting First, I had an upsetting dream about an old, very, very close, very good friend. I woke up feeling sorry for myself. I realized I'm walking around with my nose in the air all the time, casting judgment on everyone that's in here around me. I'm no different than anyone else that's in here. In some ways, I'm worse. 
Most of the people came from bad backgrounds and poor influences. What's my excuse? Alcohol? That's a weak excuse. I had opportunity after opportunity to get myself together, and I chose to ruin my life. Even if by some miracle I get out of here and finally become a, a true success, I'll always be a felon. An ex-con who spent time in prison. The world will always see me as a danger and a potential threat to their safety, and the same arrogant, ignorant, snobby judgment I give everyone in here, they will give... They will all give the same to, to me once I get back out there. I feel like a fool and a loser. Then, to add insult to injury, a booty bandit conned his way into the cell next to me. He was originally in a cell somewhere downstairs. He's talking through the vents, practically shouting, asking these ridiculous, seemingly clueless questions about who I am. Yeah, that was the other thing. So many people, it's like when booty bandits, in case you don't know... <laughs> I used to think that they were somebody that chase any tale, which that's what the term has sort of like changed into over the years. But the original booty bandits, they were people that took your behind. Like, you know, in prison, how people have the running joke, don't drop the soap or whatever. Obviously, for the person that they're talking about, they're talking about somebody who's going to try to penetrate you if you drop the soap, so don't do it. The, that person that they're talking about is a booty bandit. That is where the term comes from. I learned this from being in there. However, over time, it has changed into more so the desperate guys who go after any and every single queen. <laughs> it don't matter how good looking you are. It don't matter how rough looking you are. It don't matter. Like, um... They, if, if you, if they can get up in you, they are trying to talk to you. <laughs> That's a booty bandit, okay? And they're usually the first people that try to talk to you. Like any, uh, a, a homosexual, any person that goes, that gets locked up, the, the first person that is trying to, any homosexual that gets locked up, the first person, the first people that are trying to, you know, establish contact, make a connection, talk to you, get to know you, they are usually, nine times out of ten, the booty bandits. Everybody else in prison, even people that might look at you and think that you're cool, or somebody that might look at you and, you know, be interested and want to shoot their shot at you, but everyone in prison always is observing somebody at first. They want to see, who does this person know? Do they know anybody? How are they moving? Who are they talking to? What are they doing? You know what I'm saying? They just want to observe you. Like, see what you're about. That's what everybody in prison does. So nobody is, like, immediately trying to talk to you. The first people that are trying to talk to you are, nine times out of ten, the booty bandits. That applies to homosexuals. I don't know about straight guys. I don't know how regular, like, a regular guy that's just in there, I don't know, you know, this case with them. But as a homosexual, that's, that's just the way that it is. Um, and yeah, this guy was so annoying, because I can still remember, and that's, they always try to act like they're so naive, asking you just, like, innocent questions. It's just, they're trying to gather information on you, you know. As, as he's talking with some guy, he reveals that he clearly knew exactly who I was all along. He tried getting me to talk to him, but I didn't. What for? He, he mentions he was in the cell with Spirit for five months. Clearly, he was fucking her. <laughs> it's my understanding that with the prison booty bandits, nailing every queen that they come across becomes like a sport to them. The only booty bandit I let get me so far was Brent, which... Wait, hold on, wait. Was Brent, and that was my fault. Which, by the way, I didn't really realize that that's really what he was, but I don't think he thought of himself as like a booty bandit because he's younger, like he was 23, and... Most booty bandits are usually like mature guys, like 35 to 45 guys and, and older that are, you know, those usually are the ones. But younger guys, it's really the same thing, except that they call them trade, usually. That's what the queens call them. They call them trade. It's a young guy that knows that he's good looking and tries to get with every queen. You know what I'm saying? And uh, regular guys. Like, those guys, they... Who knows what they're doing in secret? Because guys are the most secretive people. They think... Everybody always wants to say that women are so secretive. Which, women are secretive, but guys are worse. Because usually, nine times out of ten, uh, women... 
they get discovered with their secrets because they talk. They're social. Women are social. They speak to their girlfriends. They talk to their friends. You know, they 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 might even eventually communicate with their boyfriend. But it's like they it, they're more social than guys. Guys hold everything in. So it's like they they are so secretive. They have the biggest secrets. Seriously, you never know what the hell a guy is up to. But okay. Uh, the only booty bandit I let get me so far was Brent, and that was my fault. Plus, in Brent's defense, I don't really think that Brent thought of himself as a booty bandit. And also, I honestly don't think that he viewed me as a conquest. After seeing how months later he's still talking about me, focusing his attention on everything that I was doing and not dating anyone else, it seems to me that perhaps he actually did like me. I, I liked him. I sort of wish two things had not have happened. I wish Mint, Mint was the queen that I was friends with um, at the time. I wish Mint hadn't have pulled all these negative thoughts, put all these negative thoughts in my head about him. And I wish that Brent hadn't had, hadn't have became so super intense and suffocating in zero time. Yeah, like he, he, you know, I talked about it then. So, anyway, it doesn't matter now. Getting back to the vent, the whole time the Booty Bandit was talking, Black Panther stood at his door watching. <laughs> yeah, so there were, I think the cell that was next to me, I'm on the corner, right? I'm on the, like, the corner wall. And then on that opposite wall is where Black Panther is. And out my window, I could see him. And he could see me. Next door to me, was on like the other side next door to me I think the cell was either empty or there was somebody in there that was quiet or used to talk to somebody else but then it became empty or whatever however it happened but then this guy I knew who he was because he was one of the guys that used to shout at me while I was going to the shower like Monday Wednesday and Friday were the days for the shower in segregation and when I would be going he hollered there was a couple of people, but him in particular was like the loudest and most obnoxious. He used to holler every time that I was going to the shower. Just something stupid. Sometimes like people, it's like, they're so obvious. They don't want to actually seem like they're trying to get your attention. So instead, they'll be shouting to somebody else or something like that. But it's like, you prick that exact moment as I'm going to the shower to be shouting and making yourself known. And it's every single time. And then, and then it's just the stuff that they'll be saying. Because it's like, they're saying things almost to catch your attention. Like, um, they'll start talking about a, a boy, a, a, a queen, on the, the compound or something like that. And going in about, you know, this the stuff they be doing and who they be doing it with and all of these things. It's like, you know, obviously it's just crazy. But okay, people are just crazy. Okay. Um, but yeah. Getting back to the vent, the whole time the booty bandit was talking, Black Panther stood at his door watching. The guy was taken outside for wreck and immediately Black Panther calls me over to my door. He jokingly says, I better not be talking to anyone else. Are you kidding me? Then he starts trying to get in my ear about how if the guy I'm with was really good for me, he would be encouraging me to do good for myself or some bullshit. I snapped at him and walked away from the door. I'm definitely staying in segregation. I need some time to regroup and power myself back up to deal with these motherfuckers. I get so sick and tired of all these guys trying to disguise themselves behind fake phony concern when in reality all they want is to fuck me. <laughs> Everyone I come across in here has the same attitude. It's either get the fuck away from me or let me fuck you. The presentation is slightly different with each guy, but in the end, it is all the same. That is why I loved Spade so much. Spade was like the coolest dude that I met in the other prison. And I still think about him. Like, I really want to send him a letter, but I, I don't know if I'm right or wrong in thinking like this, but I don't want to do it until I have like some money to give him. Like, I would like to... I would like to send him some money and, and a letter, just like a letter just saying like, um, thank you. Thank you for being so cool. And it was, prison's a tough world. I really struggled with it, but it, it really meant a lot to me to have somebody that treated me just like a regular person. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was just, Ace just, or excuse me, Spade just treated me like a regular person, you know? <laughs>
That's why I loved Spade so much. He was so cool and the only person who's not a queen that I felt like just me as a person. He took me for me. We kicked it as buddies, as homeboys. Actually, I felt like he kind of viewed me as a feisty little ghetto sister, but he still recognized me as a as a guy, too. I told him about my fight at the jail, how I like... Oh, my God. I can't talk about this stuff on YouTube. But how I... The type of things that I like to do with guys. Um, I, I told him how... Um... <laughs> Y'all gonna have to read this in the book, honey. It's like, okay, hold on. I told him how I get aroused by... Um... <laughs> dominating a man who's more clearly macho and dominating and more manly than me. Sometimes. The conversations were never weird or awkward or uncomfortable at all. It honestly felt like I was chatting with one of my real brothers. He's the only one so far that I have felt normal around while in here. Spade was so cool and hilarious. We were always laughing. I really miss him a lot. I should have stayed in that pod and made it work in the cell with Stay Nasty. Coulda, woulda, shoulda. Oh well, XOXO, lucky. Stay Nasty, just to jog your memory or for the new people that just happened to come across this video. Stay Nasty was the husband of another queen. A queen that I was pretty tight with, actually. KJ. Um, KJ was like this Italian blonde, you know, tall, kind of heavy set queen. But um, funny, so funny and cool. Just really cool. But that was his man, you know what I'm saying? And the administration deliberately moved me in the cell with him, trying to cause problems. Why would you do that? Like, they knew what they were doing, you know? But, yeah, I really miss Spade, and that is my journal entry for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Don't forget to subscribe. Stay safe out there, you guys. Bye. See you in the next one.